Uh, Mr Nigel Farage, uh, who joins us. Uh, Nigel, good evening. Good evening, James. To some people, of course, you're not a hero, but um, the less said about that, probably the better. <laughs> well, you, can't, you can't please all of the people all of the time, can you? No, you very, certainly very can't. Few that do, very few people that do. And mm. that was what was so remarkable about 2020, which was a pretty mm. goodness awful year for most people. And here was this fella that we'd never heard of, you know, living quietly in retirement, and he suddenly caught the imagination of the country, and he was genuinely an inspirational figure. And I think his passing today, I think tens of millions of people will feel genuinely sad. I've, uh, I've heard you've just finished reading his book. Yes, I, I was very struck when he first appeared, um, and I saw him wearing his, his, bla his regimental blazer and his medals, and I thought, hmm. yeah, you know, I remember when I was young, there were lots of people like that around, sort of quietly dignified, modest types who never told you much about their life or their war unless you asked them. Um, and I was interested in him, and I spoke to the heritage hangar at Biggin Hill, which is the old RAF. Yeah. Aerodrome, where they now restore, um, renovate, and fly Spitfires and Hurricanes. And we approached the Civil Aviation Authority and said we'd like to do a fly pass for his 100th birthday. So we had the whole thing organised, um, at which the government found out that we, were, that we were planning to do it and decided they'd do it themselves with the RAF <laughs> uh, Battle of Britain Memorial flight. But mm. either way, it happened. And mm. so, yes, I was very struck by his story. And, my daughter, one of my daughters gave me his book for Christmas, which I read. And it's a really yeah. interesting read. You know, Yorkshire, 100 years ago, what it was like growing up there. Uh, being in Burma, of mm. course, fighting the Japanese who'd invaded. Um, and I mean, some very, very, very good accounts of just what it was like, the heat, the insects, the fear. Um, and then, you know, his later years and, 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 and a couple of marriages and a few things mm. going wrong in life as well as going very well. And I read the book and I finished it two days ago. And I, and I thought, well, here's a really, really nice story just of a very decent human being. Mm. And, of course, he, he was brought up in Keithley in Yorkshire, which is a very, very Yorkshire part of Yorkshire. And still had fairly yeah, broad Yorkshire accent. Absolutely, mm. uh, James yeah. wasn't he? To the end of his days, he never lost his Yorkshire accent. Despite nope. living, he, he lived in Gravesend in Kent for many years, mm. and then finished up, you know, living up in Bedfordshire. Um, yet yeah, very proud of his his Yorkshire roots, his community, his family, um, and and his, his his grandfather, in fact, built the war memorial that is mm. there in the middle of Keighley that was put up after the First World War and the, and the terrible losses those Northern Powell battalions had. So he kind of never, ever lost that sense, I think, of being a Yorkshireman and very proud mm. of it. And, of course, he had a number one hit record with Michael Ball, we shouldn't forget either. <laughs> yes, he did, didn't he? So, you know, yet another record he broke, and topping the charts at the age of 100. And uh, just amazing and knighted by the Queen. And, and, mm. But, as I say, it was a... What a difficult year it was. I mean, we couldn't see our friends. We couldn't see our family. A lot of people have lost elderly relatives that they couldn't mm. even go and visit in their last few days. And amidst all this sadness and people losing their jobs, and amidst all of this, I, mean, I really think he was the inspirational figure of 2020. I really genuinely yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he'll be the one that will be remembered, of course, and we... We do uh, send our best wishes, I'm sure all of us here, and uh, I'm sure Nigel as well will send our best wishes to his family and his friends as well. So Absolutely. well done, how Sir ironic, Tom. James, how ironic that Burma, the country in which he went and risked his life and saw some mm. of his friends killed, that Burma, of course, is back, not just his death today, but Burma itself back in the news today, yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, country's and, and, name, yeah. the country's name was changed to Myanmar, by the military junta a couple of decades mm. ago. Um, and once again, Burma under threat and losing its ability to govern itself. Uh, and will we do anything about it, I wonder? And the answer probably is no, although we did have a long discussion on the programme about it last night where the uh, census uh, seemed to be we stop trading with them and certainly stop uh, supplying arms to them. But whether we do that or not, I don't know. Well, the problem, of course, James, is this, that, you know, we can impose sanctions, and I'm sure that uh, the Biden regime will want to do the same thing. Mm. But clearly, 
any military intervention is is completely out of the question and probably wouldn't work anyway. Um, and of course, they're being the trouble is they're being supported by the by the Chinese Communist Party. <coughs> yeah, exactly. And that's and, the real problem. Uh, hmm. Let's um, actually. I just had an idea, by the way, uh, Ash. Can you write this down? So uh, yeah, we, I've got my uh, pen. Yeah. All right, Nigel. Good. All right, Nigel. Yeah. Good evening. Um, Ash. Hi, Nigel. I, what about a record with with Nigel? Good yeah. idea. I'll put that down for the meeting. We'll discuss that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Single <laughs> with Nigel. All yeah, right. Nigel right. Farage right. sings logo, Brexit. Yeah, I told <laughs> you so, or whatever. You know. <laughs> Good idea. I mean, I'm sure. Well, Colonel Tom was a was a Brexiteer, wasn't he? I would have thought. I mean, I'm guessing, but I'm sure you know. Well, him. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't say that, but it might upset a few people. I would have thought he would. <laughs> Actually, here's an interesting thing. Talking about trolling, and I imagine uh, you have your fair share of those, or maybe you, you don't anymore because all those Remainers have realised how wrong they were. But even Sir Tom has been apparently trolled for going on holiday to Barbados. Can you yeah. imagine yeah. that? Yes, of course. I mean, the online world. The online world attracts, doesn't it, every single misfit. Uh, yeah. It's alive in the Misfit, society. That's it's a good their way word. of, yeah. it's their way of being brave, isn't it? They send out abuse, yeah. and goodness me, I, I mean, I, I can't even, I can't even tell you, James, the number mm. of times uh, over the last decade uh, that we had to get the Metropolitan Police involved because of what was being said and threatened on my social mm. media. It was endless. It was daily. Uh, but mm. I have noticed that it's not quite as hot as it used to be. Mm. Um, and mm. I think I think we're all Brexiteers now, James, aren't we? Well, I think we are, except I had a couple I dealt with mm. uh, today on uh, on Twitter who... Um, but again, you know, they, they hide under assumed names or silly mm. little pictures and things like that. And you know they're just, you know, they're just... They're, yeah. they're mentally deficient in some way. Yeah. I find them quite funny. Um, I've had some pretty horrible ones uh, uh, and sometimes you do need to call the police particularly yeah, if they yeah. start telling you yeah. where you live and things like that yeah yeah, yeah. But, I mean specific specific threats you have to deal with but generally yeah. it's best to ignore them as much as you can exactly and not encourage them in any I don't way. think you can become a Brexit Nigel I think once you vote you vote but you can become a, refor <laughs> a reformed Remainer <laughs> it's all right he's having a go at me <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>